Hello, my name is Phil. I hope you enjoy watching me partially restore this beautiful machinist toolbox by Moore and Rock. And what I'm going to use it for later is to store my wood graining tools in. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. This little grub screw that's been in the trough has caused all of this damage to the sliding door. Look at that. So every time the door's gone in, this little thing's been damaging the door. That must have taken years and years. You're not going back in. Everything's been stripped off. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I don't like this um, varnish. So I'm going to take this varnish off. I'm going to strip that. And I'm going to wax the bare wood. So I've got a, a machinist box in the house which I keep all my camera gear in. Because it's camera gear, I want to keep it so clean. This is my other machinist toolbox. If you haven't seen this video, I'll put a link in the description for you to have a look. This. I'm going to try try to clean this fabric inside uh, get rid of all the detritus and uh, certainly replace this that shot that's done I've noticed that the felt is stuck onto the boards obviously these bottoms will come off they're just pinned on so if I can get these pins out carefully get these out and then I can take the bottoms off and give them a good clean. See, the felt goes right to the edge, so that's how they've been put together. They've been felted and then assembled. I'm going to try and rescue this. So that's the plan. Once I've got the draw bottoms off, we can start to strip the varnish. This broken scraper should be just the job. And now we can see exactly how much muck is in there. Yeah, so I'll get the rest of them off and we'll get those clean. I've been out shopping, so to clean these draw liners, I'm going to use 1001 mousse. First, brush them down with a nail brush. Before and after. Pan that, see if there's any gold in it. the uh, next day and after letting these boards dry out they've turned out really well so all I'm going to do is give them another brush over while they dry the foam stuff just evaporated that's it they've been done and they do smell quite nice Right, before we start stripping, there is a thing we can do to help the stripper work a little better. Is to take some rough sandpaper, here we've got some P80, and we're going to sand the varnish down before we apply the stripper. What this does, it scores the surface of the varnish and allows the paint stripper to penetrate deep into the layer. So we can go perhaps into the second layer of varnish. Doesn't matter which direction you go, just scratch it. Remove the dust. Always put plenty on.
didn't take much pulling, did it? The strip has done its work. I'm going to use the tracho because I don't want to be scraping too much because I'm trying to keep the original fit. Now all the varnish is off, it's time to neutralise with cold water, washing up liquid, gloves off, this could get messy, and then to wipe off I've got a cloth, a little scrubbing brush. I'm going to take off this excess wool so we don't pull the joints apart. Now we can just get into some of the detail. Everything's dried out nicely now, so we've got to do a little bit of preparation on these. You see it's quite patchy, so what I'm going to use is a sanding mesh, which is a good thing about it is you can see through it, you can see what you're doing. So I've got to start preparing the surface ready for the wax. Go over and make sure there's no little bits of strip of debris, anything. but I'm going to be careful not to remove hand marks like this. These are stained. This doesn't move any of this character that I want to keep, but it does smooth it, completely smooths it down. So next I'm going to take a little bit of uh, methylated spirits and just give everything a good wipe down. So let's just take in a little bit of the grease off as well, but not everything. We're at the waxing stage. So what I'm going to use, beeswax polish by Pars Natural Wood Finishers. This is a clear. It feels quite oily. Mm -hmm. To rub it on we're going to use steel wool ultra fine or treble o grade or treble zero grade whichever you like. Three or four coats to get a nice finish rather than try and put too much on and you're going to end up with it all uneven and I also want to be taking the time to be rubbing it deep into the grain. Pretty much all of these metal parts have got varnish on. I'm just going to put a little bit of paint stripper on just to get that off. Even the little draw handles have got varnish over them. This is an old uh, telephone number. You can see there's some varnish so I should be able to lift that off carefully. It looks like an old area code. Not too sure. Probably from the 50s or 60s. Strip for a little while. Whenever I see old keys, I always buy They're usually pretty simple locks, so might be lucky. Yeah, I'm a bit. Nice looking key as well. This is my um, collection of vintage wood graining tools. And I know you can go out and buy most of these things new. But there's something quite special when they're antique like this. So I'll just uh, display and show you a few of these uh, to give you an idea this is what we're doing. We're trying to create a bit of a marriage between the machinist box and uh, my vintage tools. So yeah. Some soapy water which will uh, neutralize at the same time. 
Once I've cleaned all the varnish up, I'm just going to give them a gentle buffing just so they don't go rusty. I'll just put a bit of wax on there as well to take care of those. So don't forget to look out for my project preview video which will feature at the end of this film. So if you've enjoyed this one, you can, uh, you're can you very welcome to make a comment on what you'd like to see me do on my next project and get your comment featured which is a bit of fun for me as well because sometimes you can run dry of ideas how to make things more interesting. But yeah, I'm very, very fortunate to live in an area in the UK where getting hold of uh, antiques and projects is very easy. At boot fairs and antique centres. If you enjoy the new format, let me know. If there's part of it you don't enjoy, you know, any advice, I'll gratefully accept. And uh, hopefully we'll keep these videos coming on a regular basis. polish the metal corners I'm going to use this worn down buffing wheel which I've put a bit of wax on so you can see it's quite dirty so it's not going to polish any of the uh, patina off the corners it's just going to shine it up stop it from rusting next to the problem of the broken handle which is beyond repair as far as I'm concerned it's absolutely torn to pieces so luckily I'd say it was perfect switch the rings, put the original ones back on. These beautiful old keys I bought from a car boot sale at Skegness in Lincolnshire and the guy who sold them to me didn't want them. He said make me an offer, my wife hates them. I offered him five pounds and asked him why she hated them and apparently this man's grandfather helped demolish Derby Jail and he said that these were found in the condemned man's cell in the drain. So I'll pop a picture of uh, Derby Jail as it is now. The facade remains but uh, everything else everything else has been demolished as he said and his wife said that they were really creepy. Well, and this is uh, Rex. Watch to the end for that. It should be a nice easy job just to swap these rings. There we go. While I was editing this uh, video, I was watching this bit where I say I'll pull this uh, off, this is shot, this is done. I had a thought, it'd be a real shame if I couldn't rescue this. If I take some black felt and stick this to a piece of felt, cut it out and then I could trim it onto the door to the slide on. Would I have a go at that? Might not work, but hey, nothing ventured. Let's have a go. I'm going to flatten this out first with a bit of grease proof paper. I'm going to have to stretch it a fair way to get it to fit back. I can do a bit of work on that, try and get some of that dirt brushed over because it is quite dirty. And roll it a little bit flatter. I'm just going to use a bit of black permanent marker. See if we can fill these in a bit.
I know I'm going to quite a bit of trouble here, but it just feels nice to keep that bit of felt. Bit of one thing, it does look original. Kind of just looks like a bit of wear and tear now. These are the only two engineering related metal parts that were found in the box. We've got this little more and right precision tool attachment. It's got some kind of bearing in it, not sure. And that's the grub screw that came out of that rebate. What I'm going to do with these, I'm just going to put them in a box frame, keep them together. I was just practicing how I was going to mount this handle to this little board to go in the box frame. And I've noticed this string it's wrapped up in old newspaper. I'll see if I can pull the, the string through. There you go. And there's the newspaper wrapped around. Registration and license in vehicles has amounted to £289,306. So you can gently pull it through. Oh yeah. Oh, right. What are the chances we can find a date? It's pretty tightly wrapped. Uh, for trial and... Ah, we've got a car. Oh wow. Smart modern lines of the very famous Powerful and lavishly equipped Wolseley. Well, that's crazy. Wolsey Coupe. Yeah. No date as yet. On the other side, for your daily treatment, Miss Otterlane. Wow, that's really interesting. What a turn up. On the back, I'll line this inside the frame make a complete display of it. Well, there we go, I've managed to cram it all into the little box frame. What? <laughs> 